thanks for coming. This is a presentation on practical dashboards for OpenNMS. Uh, my name is Ken Eshelby. Uh, maybe a little bit about myself. Um, I have a lot of varied interests. <laughs> I work for the OpenNMS group. Uh, I started this year. Uh, I'm from Oregon. Um, prior to working for OpenNMS, I worked for about 20 years in public service for the Oregon state government. Um, some of you, many of you may not know where Oregon is, so I thought I would show a couple of shots of, of what the area I live in looks like. Uh, we're on the west coast of the U.S., above California. Many people know where that is, <laughs> so, but here's some things of, of how our state looks. It's very nice to live in, uh, lots of variety, um, and I enjoy it a lot. Uh, I worked as a network engineer for the most part. I came up through university doing LAN support, server administration, and then for the past 15 years as a network engineer. Uh, I worked in NOC, and then in the government, a medium-sized data center was built, so uh, I became part of that team, that effort, and that's when I started uh, using and modifying OpenNMS to suit uh, our operations needs. Um, as time went on, I, a lot of my energy was pulled away from OpenNMS and I started doing more project management types of things and, and more focused on the network engineering side. So that's the angle I'm, I've been coming from and, and we had mostly Cisco equipment, so it's a very network centric, but we also did uh, servers and, and other types of devices in our network. So this, this presentation is uh, mostly about how to take the information that we had and get it to a certain audience of people uh, in a way that they would find useful. Uh, some, some like the, I hadn't seen the wallboard demonstration that, that David gave earlier, and so this could be a, something to integrate into that uh, fairly easily. So it could be a useful thing uh, for that kind of a situation. Okay, so on to the task at hand. Uh, so the, the goal of creating this dashboard is to bring forward information that's <coughs> useful and actionable. Um, there's a lot of work involved in that, and this is not an easy task. Uh, we had maybe a deployment of 2,500 network-related devices, uh, maybe five, 6,000 overall devices. So uh, taking all that and distilling it into a actionable and important prioritized type of, of view was, uh, was tricky. So uh, using a dashboard was one way to accomplish, accomplish bringing that information to a help desk person, an engineer, an analyst, a manager, uh, you know, so you have a lot of needs in your network or in your <coughs> NMS system. This is the biggest problem in larger uh, deployments. Uh, deployments that OpenNMS sort of is, is built for. Uh, you have a lot of pieces of information at any given time and when you have a uh, high impacting uh, type of outage you have even more uh, pieces of information and you need to work hard on um, reducing that to useful information. So uh, it takes a lot of time, years and thought critical thought to to accomplish taking taking the, the useful things so that people can find root co causes of problems and and uh, fix them efficiently quickly um, and hopefully prevent it from happening in the future um, so the key point here I think is is the bottom paragraph do noise reduction is not uh, throwing out lots of pieces. It's, 
it's a balancing act. It's it's kind of a dance that you have to you have to really go through all the inputs into your system that are coming that your open NMS system is collecting or or bringing in and all the the pieces that are being sent to it. And you need to take that whole jumble and turn it into something that uh, makes sense for whatever needs you have. And Working for the OpenNMS group, I have found that many different uh, organizations have very different needs. So this is a difficult task. We can't, it's difficult to make a template to say, here, do this. <laughs> and so uh, in, a, in a simple way, uh, events are kind of the lifeblood of OpenNMS and you have options to manage them and that's what this long line is about. You can, you can define an event and you can apply uh, a behavior to that event. And so this is kind of the first round in, in how you would go about uh, managing all of your event uh, that come into your system, that your system uses. Uh, it, is, it pays benefits to put lots of effort into this and to understand the scope of your events and the volume and how to take all these uh, pieces and prioritize and uh, decide what to do with them. Um, and this never ends. You do not set and forget. And I'm talking again about larger environments. You have to continually revisit these things and you add new devices and they bring on their own set of challenges and pieces of information. So this is this never ends and I found it a puzzle and very fun and challenging. This is a system where <laughs> no event management happened <laughs> because at the top are generic enterprise default traps <coughs> and they number in uh, 14 million, 14 and a half million of these which tells me that None of the traps, or very few of the traps were defined and they were not managed. They were not uh, discarded. They were not uh, formatted into other, you know, more clearly defined events. Um, and so what can happen in this situation is you can fill up your database. You know, if, you're, if you have a fairly limited size allocated to where your database is stored, you can run into trouble here. So this illustrates uh, the need to manage your events and deal with noise in your system. You can also get away with this for forever if you don't have many things, but I recommend staying on top of this. So in our case, the main goal, be so we built a data center, which is a trick inside of any bureaucracy. So putting together the organization, uh, allocating uh, people and resources budget uh, to go from existing organizations into a new one, it's all political, um, it's, it's very difficult. And as such, when, we, when all the technicians came together, we had to determine uh, simply what was out there was the first trick. So we started with the most basic idea of we just wanted to know what was down because that's about all we could handle at the time. Um, it's very reactive. Uh, it was very rudimentary. We'd be giving uh, tickets to people who came from a certain area if that was the equipment that went down at first. And as time went on we, we got better and better at this and we wanted more and more detail. And we developed our approach to information we received. So as you do that, as you decide that you want better detail information, it increases the complexity of your system and it gets difficult quickly, but it's very worthwhile to, to uh, put the energy into that kind of effort. Um, it pays dividends, the, the effort that you put up front and like I say, this is a continuing effort. You never really stop doing this. So what we ended up doing is hacking the OpenNMS front page to use this 
nodes down box to just show this this was the th if this is the thing that most people are interested in my <coughs> organization this is their priority then put that front and center and let them see that so what I did was I uh, took uh, basically a, an enhancement ticket that uh, Ronnie one of the organizers uh, made and I modified it to fit our needs and it's it basically was a uh, the nodes down UEI and all it was was a query for it and it took those and displayed them uh, on the front page through JSP so it, it's not sustainable it's not necessarily recommended because uh, upgrades will you have to manage how what will happen for an upgrade because files will get overwritten so you have to plan for it and uh, also the JSP and the underlying system changes so that you have to be aware that you would need to accommodate that so it's not really the ideal answer but it, it suited our needs for a short, short term um, and, and got us through however during that time the REST API became more and more prevalent and so I started looking for other ways and, and that's that's what I went with uh, getting pulling this type of data out of the database and then being able to display it externally in a form that that we could use and our help desk could use and our engineers could use you know so uh, it, it uh, suited our needs very well uh, so if you want to go find out more about REST you go to the openNMS.org uh, page and in the wiki and there's a very very good page on all the details of what's available in REST. Uh, you can control things, you can get information, uh, you can delete things, um, so you have some flexibility there. And and for me, looking at it, uh, I, I looked at it in mind of future controls that I can build into another tool to make it to uh, remove the default interface for a user and only give them controls maybe that they want to do or features that they want it. So that's that's a, how I approached uh, REST from an information providing perspective. So uh, here is the, if you haven't seen it, I, I'm guessing many of you have seen this, but I wanted to go through this uh, fairly quickly. REST is, is uh, presented in an XML form within the OpenNMS system itself. It's just a URL that you can go to, and there are different areas. This this is the, the node information. Um, the thing that doesn't show on, on this screen but uh, exists or that were interesting to me were categories. They're, they're included in the node information. So I can work with that because that suited some of my needs. Uh, here Here's an example of an alarm. Here is the outage table, um, and the outage table is imp uh, important because it contains the node ID, which is a link to, uh, you reference the some node information if you wanted to pull that forward. So that's kind of your index into your outage, it's, it's the glue. Um, and then <coughs> also, also not to be discounted, meaning you need to sort of go through, if you're interested in doing something like this, you need to go through each of these, uh, what, REST areas and look through them with, given your environment and look at what information is provided bec because you may not realize what is there. For example, you wouldn't think of notifications as being a place to be used in a dashboard but the interesting thing about notifications is you get this text message uh, field and what that gives you is a flexibility to provide a really short uh, description of, of the issue so that you, you use events maybe in alarms and you can pull out uh, longer descriptions or you can customize all of your events to have a short message but you could also use a notification for doing that too so you have flexibility and there are different ways of using different pieces of information within the REST API uh, and it, it can be useful so my recommendation is explore 
<laughs> and see what's there and how you could use it. So uh, if you have this API, you know, what, what do you do? What can I do with REST? How can I present it? Um, so I am not uh, strictly a developer. I would call myself a hacker and maybe a poor hacker at that. Uh, so I went to find something, and what I found was a was a an OpenNMS OpenNMS dashboard that existed on SourceForge, and is available through GitHub. Uh, that was a fork of a Nagios dashboard, you know, <laughs> which is kind of we poo poo a little on, but uh, you can take what's there and and make it make it awesome. So that's what I tried to do. Uh, the components of the page are an index that basically builds the framework of the page, uh, content that uh, gives it more structure and where to populate data, and then functions that, that go gather data and uh, bring the rest data in, and then styles to uh, <laughs> make it pretty or ugly. <laughs> Depends on your web design skills. Uh, so I'll go, I'll go through uh, these a little bit. Here, the index really doesn't have too much. It really describes uh, there's a refresh uh, and it's controlled at the top. It's just a variable. Um, I had it at five seconds because I wanted sort of a live uh, looking view of, of the system. Uh, and then there are things like setting, uh, setting the frames where uh, content will be filled into and and different bars and things like that. So it's pretty, it's pretty basic. Uh, most of this was in there already. I really didn't modify too much in, in, on this page. Um, <coughs> so it's minimal interest. Uh, and here's my attempts at highlighting <laughs> last night. Um, the, content, the content page gets more interesting because it is where you can start filtering uh, your content. So the big piece, um, the initial piece, I guess, that I wanted to do was filter via our foreign source because I organize, our organization uh, was made up of teams like a security team, a server team, a storage team, network team, that kind of thing, sort of traditional function areas. And so I wanted to give uh, teams the visibility that they that they needed to, you know, that they were interested in. So I put in, uh, you know, basically a statement to find foreign sources that were network and, and display those. And also in this case, uh, for the nodes, the original nodes down requirement, display uh, node related things and give it a, give it a priority or a severity of major, which basically turns it a lighter shade of red. Um, it's, just, it's a visibility thing, and that's defined in CSS that I'll show you later. Uh, likewise, for each of these lines that get displayed for a node down, uh, part, of the, part of the message is I give a link back to the node page so that you can navigate directly from your web status display into the node page to get more information and to see your maybe event history of, of things related to that node. So you could have a direct uh, connection to the issue at hand. Um, slight subtle things like that uh, tend to be very helpful and uh, save time. You know, it's it's. A link instead of uh, going to open an MS main page, searching for your node, or however you navigate to that thing. That it saves a little time just to click a link. Uh, so, on a piece of the dashboard, I had uh, it started out with just uh, outages, basically current outages that included nodes down, but it also incorporated services down and interfaces down as well. Uh, recent, more recently, I had a request to separate those out into their own areas so that it was easier to pick out only the nodes down issue because, again, that was a higher priority than HTTP is out on, on some device. Um, so I started splitting it out that way. And then 
in addition, and this was built into what the, the original dashboard that I took was this uh, recent outages where you looked for in the outages table for uh, if the if the outage had not if the service had not been regained, uh, then it was still out. However, if it if it did regain regain service, then it was it was good. It was operational. So what this what this section did is it gives you it pulled out the the recent outages that had recovered and gave you a context of recent outages so that you could look at current outages and see a relationship to outages that had just occurred in the recent past and you could give yourself sort of a snapshot of a history of what had just been going on so that you could before it disappeared you could see things that had had recently happened very it's very small very helpful uh, piece to display on a, on a dashboard so that's that's basically what this section of code is I don't expect I mean I don't I don't know your how about this raise your hand if you have familiarity with working with PHP right so it's it's not yeah <laughs> right. so <laughs> some of you have been forced to use PHP <laughs> So it's not it's not the most straightforward stuff, but it's you can given given that you might have some understanding of how OpenNMS works, and you can go look at the REST information. You can kind of pull out uh, how to how to use things, how to use pieces of OpenNMS, and do an if statement and create a filter for your network, foreign source, that kind of thing. Um, and you can go figure out the structure of an if statement on online somewhere, or go through Code Academy and learn all about PHP. Um, and that's probably a good thing because this, honestly, this code could be uh, much cleaner than it is. I'm certain. Uh, and then, so, so basically, the outages were things that uh, I tend to group like functions like I'll go into the node page and I'll rearrange where things are because I wanted something like informative things in one area and status things in another area so I would rearrange things on that anyways I was a little obsessive about things like that I wanted to generate an experience for a user that could they could identify uh, what the information is that they're looking at kind of in a in a familiar way or a contextual way so that one piece wasn't in one area and another piece isn't in another area. So that's my approach in general is how can I make this more easily understandable to any user or hopefully manager but that's a whole other ball game. Uh, so on one part of the dashboard on the left column is more status things of outages and recent outages. On the right, I chose to show alarms. Uh, we used alarms uh, that came in through thresholds and through our syslog uh, integration. Um, it also includes alarms that are node down and interface down, but they're mixed in with, with all the other things so that you can see in a time-wise fashion uh, different different issues that are, different events that are firing off. Um, so it made sense to, to include this information as well because you can see things like uh, power supply failures and uh, line card outages on large equipment and other related types of things that you can bring <coughs> into the system. But again, back to the original idea of eliminating noise, this, this kind of thing only works if you've filtered down your information to uh, usable bite-sized chunks. It doesn't work if you just open the floodgates and get just a, a huge torrent of information because it all gets lost. So I, I don't really cover that in, in this presentation, but that that is really the key to any of this kind of thing is to figure out in your organization how, how, to, how to limit your information. You know, there are lots of strategies and ways and everybody has a different organization to work within. So just like in the uh, in the uh, on the node side with the outages where it take you to a node page this link 
takes you to the alarm page for that alarm. So you can acknowledge it or clear it. Whatever, whatever you need to do, you have a, a direct link into the control to a <coughs> change of that actual alarm itself. So that's, that's pretty handy as well. Uh, so so that, that dealt with the content. And so here, these are the pieces that feed the content. There's a generic feed me that goes out and fetches something. And that something is defined by uh, what parameters you're working with. So this, this feed me uh, sends, uh, has some options that it sends in its curl request. The major, the major piece is the user and uh, password for the role that's used. Um, this just shows generic rest and rests for it. There were other attempts at ways of doing this, and I found this to be the, the simplest. So uh, this is not secure. However, I was operating in a secure environment, so it, it was fairly uh, narrowed down to only the people using this. And the, the it was in the network group, so I knew exactly where packets were going. So. Uh, Use with caution. <laughs> you may have to get more complicated if you're if you're trying to separate out your dashboard from your system uh, topologically or logically within your system, your network. Um, so that was a general uh, give me information. Here is an example of, for example, pulling outages and outage information. And really, all this is, is it 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 defines. Uh, the area and rest where to, where to get things and then it has kind of a structure in uh, where those where those pieces of information you're interested in in the outages table via the rest API that you're you're pulling from and so uh, things are basically the with the ASCII arrows things are basically indented and it's a it's navigating through it like a tree hierarchy to get to the to get to the data, and <coughs> this is how it's expressed. Um, I think I have, yeah. So, so here's here's the equivalent where let's let's pick out an example from from this page. So, I wanted to get, uh, for example, the node ID. So, to get to the node ID, to then link it to a node, possibly, uh, I have to go into the service lost event because that's where it's found, and so. If you look down here in the service lost event uh, table or section of, of that outage, you see right here node ID, and that's that's how you can link that to a name because there's no there are no names that exist in the uh, I better oh there is a node label that exists there sorry I was wrong <laughs> there 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 are by necessity. Things, certain things you have to link from one table to another table. And the node ID is the index in this case that allows that linking to happen. Uh, this, is, this is the same kind of idea for the alarms. This is the, the, uh, how you would get an alarm and uh, the type of information that you'd want to pull to then display. So this is really where pouring through the rest API and the, the REST XML resulting uh, XML that you get to figure out exactly what you're going, what information you're <coughs> going to get, and what you you know it, with in mind what you're going to do with that information. You you kind of have to do all of this yourself. This this I guess you could use what I've got, uh, which is on the OpenNMS wiki page. You could use this as a as a framework to start with and then customize which is effectively what I did. I took what was there and then I added the pieces I want. And I have more pieces I want to add. Uh, so then the final piece is wrapping it into a displayable uh, form. And <laughs> you get to learn about how browsers react through your users to various CSS. And I was writing CSS with VI because that's what I knew. And I probably should have worked in a uh, GUI to write the CSS because <laughs> it can be a struggle. <laughs> so, uh, how do I program with CSS? Well, I go out to Google Image Search and I find things that 
are appealing. And then I go try to find the code for those things and copy it into CSS and see what it looks like and see if it fits my needs. So <laughs> programming by Google Images, basically. Uh, maybe not the most efficient way, but uh, it's a powerful search engine and it lets you get into uh, ideas. It's, this is all about, for me, uh, generating ideas so that I can, I can uh, describe and define things that I want and then uh, drill into the web and, and find exactly uh, similar things and, and change them to how I, I feel I, w I would like things to display. Uh, so here's a little piece of the CSS code. All these two lines are doing is defining uh, the bars that are the background for an a outage or an alarm in a, a severity. So they're just to match OpenNMS's severities, I use the same uh, description or the same types of major, minor, <coughs> critical, uh, normal, um, informative, that kind of thing. Uh, just if, if I'm linking a uh, outage or an alarm into OpenNMS system, I want that information to flow the same way so that somebody looks at, at information on a dashboard and it, you know, different colors, different changes from the OpenNMS system, it creates confusion. And I don't want anybody to have misunderstanding that way. So it makes sense to me to follow the same kind of model. Um, and the result, let's see, this was the first round of the, of the display. Um, you can see I don't have at the bottom a uh, legend and colors defined there because at the time I, didn't, I couldn't work out how to do that yet. Um, I have three slides here um, and you'll see kind of an evolution of, of what was going on. At, this, at the same time, I also noticed that uh, some of these were, were taking up multiple lines and I wanted to try to minimize that. So that meant going in and editing events or, you know, for example, I was showing you the notifications uh, rest information, using, using notification information that way. I don't, I don't believe in any of the iterations that I uh, worked with notifications, but it was on the table as a possibility to, to, uh, to work with. Um, but so this, this kind of a display went to, this is more of a final form where now I have very pretty, uh, almost 3D looking, <coughs> gradient looking kinds of things that catch your eye. Um, you can see that, that for the nodes and the outages, there are, there's a link there which goes to the node page. Similar with alarms, it'll go to the nodes alarm. Uh, here's a syslog message that talks about a, uh, we had a recurring issue with an ASIC on one of our uh, core switch um, blades. So this kept recurring, which made it great for a dashboard because I could show it as an example. <laughs> um, but but this, is, this is close to the final form and, and I ended up, maybe not the best approach, but it was the, the initial approach is, is it allowed me, uh, this one was catered just to network related information. Um, an evolution that I don't show was uh, in the outages, I split it out by node interface service and you don't see the recent outages, but you can see that in, in this one. Here's an example of, of the recent outages that were occurring when it was sort of a quieter time, fewer outages going on. But that's, uh, that's the result of that effort to uh, bring people information in, you know, without sending a lot of emails uh, to possibly have up on a, a static display somewhere in the operations center and uh, give them a quick glance at what's going on. Uh, one thing that we had a need for was uh, we had a concept of critical issues. So we would categorize and label things to match that. Uh, backbone interfaces could be considered critical. So they would get elevated severity and priority in, in the system. And you could, you could kind of model that because you could, you could categorize it as critical. And then in th I didn't get to this point, but you, in theory, you could bring in uh, those critical items into the dat dashboard and show it as, you know, much more vibrant red kind of a color. You know? So uh, 
this is this is sort of the state that I left it in. Actually, this is this is closer to the final form that I left it in. Um, the to-dos that I wanted to uh, include in this is the ability for a user to select which filter. Uh, the filters in the PHP code here are uh, static. Um, so I wanted to have radio buttons or some kind of check boxes so that people could select categories or there would be a search bar so they could just type in ad hoc type of a category and, and filter on different criteria. That gets more complicated. Uh, pulling, if your devices have many categories associated to them, there's some complexity in the code to address that. So it's, it's more work, but it's, a, it's, it's pretty interesting work, I think. Um, so that's, that's uh, I think that's, yeah, that's it. Are there questions? <laughs> Are there discussion? <laughs> Sure. Um, so after you've done this, have you upgraded OpenMS? I think you have. What experience have you had? Uh, I had a 110 system and a 112.1 system. And uh, it worked the same between the two. Because the REST API uh, didn't really change, the REST API was added to uh, more than reconfigured. Re so. Uh, there weren't any problems, and this is again uh, in the <coughs> original in the original effort, right? This does not carry over this type of a uh, between versions. This this will uh, this will can very easily cause problems for you. So then upgrades. I wanted I wanted to get away from having so much dependency on changes for for between upgrades. I had, this system had a lot of customization anyways that caused other kinds of pain, but, but REST was an area that I felt I could rely on 100% of the time. I'd never had a kind of a questionable, did something just happen kind of a moment. So I'm really comfortable with this. <coughs> yeah. Uh, did, you, did you run uh, the PHP server on the same server that uh, on one I did, and on the development one I ran it on a different server. Um, they were all within the same management subnet though, so there wasn't any uh, real tricks to um, getting that data connected. Didn't notice anything. What was the size of the, how many nodes did you monitor? About 2,500 nodes. Uh, there were maybe 300,000 uh, data collections going on. Our event, again, because because I worked hard to keep events down in the system, so there wasn't a lot of uh, write load that way. You you help yourself. So uh, the I've been using OpenNMS since 1.2, and back then there were more. Uh, issues surrounding performance that you had to really be careful about. Things have gotten better. Uh, systems in, inside are, are getting much more performant and improving uh, their efficiency. So it starts, it starts easing up, but you can still run, like I showed the database, you, you can still uh, shoot yourself fairly easily. So my approach was to monitor as much of the server itself as I could so that I could see uh, how maybe an upgrade, a version change would affect how how much CPU resource and memory and the Java information in the database, all these different things that can change. If you add collections, if you bring in whole new clumps of traps or syslog messages, types of things, how that impacts your system. So I, I learned to be very on top of that and try to understand, you know, in the middle of the night I would get this this uh, spike in CPU for two or three hours, and I couldn't figure out what it was. Well, it was uh, it was uh, on a large database, the stats D uh, report that would run in the night, say the top 20 most used interface, you know, for bandwidth, right? And so finally, I found that. I said, Ah, that's what that is, right? 
So you can choose to turn that off. Or so yeah, the PHP itself, very minimal. Okay, but, uh, the, the access, uh, from the database, no? the, the rest, uh, it's like the information from the Yes, database. yes. Postgres is very efficient. It doesn't, 8, 4, and especially 9 has been really, for our size, of the, our database was 2 gigabytes for those 2,500 nodes. Uh, I brought in lots of syslog um, and had, I guess, a normal amount of events going on, you know, ups and downs and service outages. And I, I trim, I tried to trim everywhere I could, you know, it, and again, this is a long, many years effort and continuing, so it's always continuing managing of the system. Yeah. So no problems, but <laughs> no problems, asterisk. On the first year, I think. Yeah. Yep. You can see, you know, if we had an outage, uh, if we had a, a area outage that affected um, you know, 100 nodes, this is this is maybe not the most efficient way to, to handle that kind of a thing. Um, you know, so it's not it's not the magic bullet, it's just one more tool that you can use. Uh, and I, this is more of a me looking at it day-to-day, uh, -day, having it maybe on a, a small screen somewhere or in a rotation, you know, or just something that uh, something I breeze through, like I, t I typically work in virtual desktops, so right, I'm doing a lot of switching desktops around. So as I'm doing this, this this may be up in full screen on one of them and I, it catches my eye kind of a thing. You know, so for me, that's how, but for the help desk, they would have it up on one dedicated screen and it was set up so that when they saw red, that was something they had to deal with. Yeah. Uh, what, what was the feedback you got from the users? Very positive. Uh, it was. It tended to be difficult to get, uh, and these were probably just the nature of my users. Uh, how can I make it better? A lot of this. A lot of these things I had to come up with myself and push out into the field and say, you know, how. What do you like about this? What could be better? That kind of thing. But. But uh, a lot of positive, I got a lot of interest in uh, when something went wrong and they couldn't figure it out. Um, I wouldn't always point to this because there was much more in the OpenNMS system itself, that more information for investigative stuff, but, but this was one thing they could switch to if they're used to using some other mechanism. They could switch to, to to verify, is this showing what this other thing is showing as well? Or, or is this showing more or less, or you know that kind of thing? So, our environment was a little funny politically and, and organizationally. So, <coughs> we had a few tools going on. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for coming.